good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, August 25. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has announced longer curfew hours for the entire island, among a range of stricter control measures to halt the continued spike in COVID-19 cases. Effective Thursday, August 27, the national curfew is now 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. daily until September 30. However, Kingston, St. Andrew, St. Thomas, Clarendon, and St. Catherine will continue to be under 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew until September 2, after which these five parishes will also start abiding by the 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew until September 30. The Prime Minister made the announcement in a virtual press briefing Monday night as another 83 positive cases were reported, bringing the country's total to 1,612. To help reduce those numbers, Mr. Holness also declared that certain church restrictions that were in place for Kingston, St. Andrew, St. Thomas, Clarendon, and St. Catherine will now apply to the rest of the country. Funeral services will be prohibited. Burials, however, will continue, but with strict observation and enforcement of the 15-person rule and the 15 uh, rule, 15-person rule includes no more than 10 mourners with the additional five persons comprising the officiating clergy, the funeral officials, and persons pre uh, preparing the gravesites. Funeral processions in Jamaica as of August 27, 2020, will only be allowed to include the hearse, uh, the vehicles taking the officiating clergy, and the mourners. These measures also come into effect August 27. However, churches are allowed to continue regular worship services as well as weddings, provided the limit on numbers and other safety protocols are met. As for general election activities, Mr. Holness says the two major political parties have indicated that they will suspend drive through campaigns. In the meantime, Prime Minister Andrew Holness has also announced what he calls a stay-in-home order for residents of several corporate area communities where a clustering of COVID-19 cases has been seen. These are the communities identified recently for heightened monitoring by the health authorities. Effective Thursday, August 27, persons living in these communities will only be allowed to leave their homes for legitimate business, even outside the curfew hours. Residents in these communities uh, will be allowed to leave home, go to work, to obtain food and medical supplies, access medical services and conduct businesses and financial transactions. However, uh, if you are going to go out for no good reason, if you are going to go and light on the corner or hang out on the corner or just walk about without a purpose, uh, you will be required in these defined communities to stay inside or return to your abode. This measure does not rise to the level of a quarantine, but is designed to limit unnecessary movement. Persons in these and other areas are also being discouraged from interacting with others not in their immediate households. And in another move to limit interactions that encourage the spread of the novel coronavirus, government has called a halt on the granting of permits for parties and other amusement events for the next two weeks. Prime Minister Holness says permits that have already been issued will be cancelled and refunded. He says this is necessary as the surge in positive COVID-19 numbers have been linked to parties, church conventions, funerals and other such activities where persons are converged. Try as they may have and some may have actually tried. It is always going to be difficult. Uh, merriment and partying are not consistent with the conscious behavior that is necessary to stay safe from COVID-19. While revealing that the police have charged and prosecuted more than 1,000 persons for breaching the Disaster Risk Management Act, he warned that the level of enforcement and prosecutions will be significantly heightened. In other COVID-related news, government will be providing financial assistance to teachers in the private sector who are affected by the pandemic. This was revealed by Education Minister Carl Samuda during the JTA's 56th annual press conference held recently at the Montego Bay Convention Center. The private school educators will access the support under the CARE program offered by the Ministry of Finance. Teachers are to receive a one-off payment of $40,000 each, while support staff will get $10,000 each. 
The Education Minister is also reminding the public that the Finance Ministry has set aside $50 million to assist students who are not on the PATH program with back-to-school preparation. The phased reopening of the 2020-2021 academic year is scheduled for October 5. Meanwhile, a new infant department has been officially opened at the Wakefield Primary School in St. Catherine, just in time for the new academic year. Ground was broken for the construction in July 2019. Minister of Health and Member of Parliament for the area, Dr. Christopher Tufton, opened the department a few days ago. All around what we have here is a facility or a compound that will give the best possible opportunities to our young people to evolve and to learn and to grow. Principal Tamika Riley Powell says the new infant department will allow the school to monitor students from early childhood all through the primary level. We'll be able to guide our students and guide their development. We'll be able to facilitate early intervention programs to address any needs our students may have. We also are in a position to foster greater level of academic and social development. Financing was provided by the Chase Fund, which has also supplied the furniture, kitchen appliances, and perimeter fencing. Mrs. Riley Powell says Chase has also committed to furnish the play area with required equipment by the end of term one. And finally, $43 million is being spent to renovate the St. James Parish Court. The renovations, which is expected to last four months, will include tiling, painting, plumbing, electrical installations, and a ramp being built to allow wheelchair access for the elderly and disabled. Justice Minister Delroy Chuck says this is part of the ministry's ongoing renovations and maintenance of courts to enhance the built environment for the delivery of justice services. Approximately $652.5 million is being spent to renovate justice sector infrastructure this financial year, including continued refurbishment of the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions and the Manchester Parish Court. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching.